Today we're visiting Newcastle. This is another of William Delon's castles, the others being Coiti and Ockmore. Initially constructed in 1106 as a ring work, the defences were strengthened either by William Fitz Robert, 2nd Earl of Gloucester, or by Henry II who took over the Lordship of Glamorgan on William's death in 1183. These improvements gave the castle a 2 metre thick curtain wall that surrounded a 40 metre long inner courtyard. Henry died in 1189 and ownership of the castle transferred to Prince John, also known as John Lackland. You might, however, be more familiar with him as the villainous king so troubled by Robin Hood. Robin is, of course, a fictitious character, but John did apparently have some troubling traits described as petty, spiteful and cruel. Regardless of whether or not this is true, Prince John handed the castle to Morgan Ap Caradog in the same year he received it. The castle changed hands frequently until in 1217 it came into the ownership of Gilbert de Turberville of Coity Castle. He however elected to remain at the more luxurious Coity Castle. The castle has high quality stonework, of a special interest is the Norman doorway. In the 16th century, Tudor windows and fireplaces were added to the South Tower, which is still standing. This castle is opposite a church, and the church and the castle both overlook the town of Bridgend. It's an incredibly strategic vantage point, because you can see quite a long way over the town that wouldn't have been there then, but would have provided an incredibly good sight line to see if anybody was coming to invade. The entranceway to this castle has some really nice stonework. They've got a lovely column either side of the door, which is quite unusual, because usually there's a tad more ornate than that, but it's quite simple, quite nice. I like it. Well, the view that greets you as you come through this massive gateway is, well, I suppose I could say it's a bit underwhelming. You kind of expect to see stuff inside a castle, and this is a castle without much stuff. Admittedly, unlike other places that we've been, there is more than just kind of the castle gates. This has got all the walls that went around the outside, although some of them have been obviously robbed out and used in the walls of people's gardens and houses. But inside the castle, there's not much of anything. There's the, the base of a few walls, and that's it. There's a bit of lawn. I don't know whether to say I'm underwhelmed or not. I might be underwhelmed. I'll keep you posted. Generally, when you walk into a castle, the sound from the outside world is muted. Not so with this one. The main reason probably being is that the wall doesn't come very high over there. You can see the town kind of peeking up over the top of it, looking a bit weird when you come into this Norman medieval style fortification and you're looking out and there's a few shops and a few houses and cars. It's a bit of a, where am I? When am I? <laughs> You can see they've been a bit picky, really, when they've taken the stone from this place. The stuff that's been robbed out, this stuff is all nicely dressed. It's all nice and flat down the front. Now, that's the really prized stuff, so that's obviously what's gone first. You can see other sections of the wall where just that's been taken, and it leaves all this raggedy stuff behind, which is kind of the internals of the wall, but this is the prized stuff, which, when you have a look around the town, you can see loads of it. It's just... It's people's garden walls and it's the front of people's houses and yeah, somebody thought this was a really good source of building materials. I say somebody, I suspect there was more than one of them. So what do you think of Newcastle? As far as castles go, it's not the most impressive one we've been to. It's not the most pretty one we've been to. It's not the most anything one we've been to, but it's a castle and I like castles, so I'm fine with visiting it. 
<laughs> oh good you're you're underwhelmed then i mean we have people have actually commented to us online that mm, this is one of those castles where there's not a lot here dallas ditchwater was a phrase use but i don't it quite agree, i don't quite agree with that there's some stuff here but you kind of got to go on the right day because if you come on a day when it's just dingy and gray and overcast it does look a bit kind of i would imagine yeah. that'd be pretty horrible wouldn't it should we call it a noisy castle because because <laughs> it is i mean you've got uh, the town sits sort of directly below. There's a train line nearby. I am of the impression that the reason this castle was built here is because then the people that lived in the castle could sit and watch the football matches that go on down below and the sports they had ground a football, in the town. Football pitch back when. They of course, they did. Yeah. I mean, the bounds were done. I mean, I can only assume that was that probably predates the castle. I would have thought. Yes, an ancient football pitch. I'm <laughs> sure. Anyway, it's I probably think probably Roman. <laughs> it probably is. I suspect that that is enough from us uh, here at Newcastle, don't you think? I think so. Yes. So, see you next time. TTFN.